welcome to another episode of Med Talk. Our first episode was on COVID-19 a few weeks ago with Dr. Pooja Shah, infectious disease physician from Edison, New Jersey. Today, we have Dr. Vasudev Makija, mental health provider, as well as president of South Asian Mental Health Initiative and Network, SAMIN, a nonprofit organization, addresses the mental health needs of South Asian community in the United States. The goal of SAMIN is to decrease the stigma, some misbelief and shame associated with mental illness and offer resources for people who seek help. Our discussion today is on current public health, public health emergency with COVID-19. And we already heard so much on TV, social media, and from the medical providers all over the world and experts on what COVID-19 is and what are the steps we can take to prevent getting the infection and reduce transmission and stay healthy. However, Today, we will be discussing the mental health aspect and impact of COVID-19 in general population where a lot of anxiety and panic and fear about the disease. The social distancing and closing of the schools, colleges, restaurants and theaters and almost all public uh, uh, gatherings uh, for the past few weeks uh, and staying home uh, recommendation by the government have many, many impact on socioeconomic as well as physical health, but has some challenging effects on mental health also. As we all going through this rough times in our lifetime, especially unemployment, business shutdowns, or volatile financial market and uncertainty, many people are stressed and have a lot of anxiety, which can result in depression, loss of sleep, and other mental health conditions. So let's hear from one of our own mental health expert from the South Asian community. Welcome, Dr. Makija, uh, and uh, welcome to Med Talk. Thank you. So I want to start with a question which is in mind of so many people right now. People are worried and nervous, and there is a panic which is, which is a significant concern to many people. Can you tell us how our mental health affects our physical health, and do you believe that we will have a crisis with mental health. Is anxiety and fear normal during this time of current epidemic with COVID-19? What are your thoughts on this? I think these are very challenging times for all of us. And uh, no one is spared from the impact of this COVID-19 pandemic. I mean, I think it has brought uh, humanity to its needs globally. And uh, we are all worried confused, uh, scared, and fearful. I think that is normal. I think, in fact, I would go uh, to the extent and say that if you're not worried, mm. something is wrong. Okay. okay, so that is the normal worry. I mean, uh, normal worry in terms of that fuels your taking actions to help protect you and take the steps uh, so things don't get out of hand. Mm -hmm. So the second question was, uh, second part of the question was, uh, uh, is it going to be crisis with mental health? As I said, I think these are normal emotions, normal experiences. It has caught everybody by surprise. Yeah. And uh, so we are all kind of figuring out how to take this. You know, and, and it's evolving and, and daily we hear things and we are adjusting our emotions and uh, our anxieties. Uh, so I have uh, not really seen uh, a crisis in mental health, honestly. Uh, I think these are normal things. And just because you have some mental health, mental illness, let's say depression, schizophrenia or bipolar or whatever, it doesn't mean you can ha cannot have these normal emotions. emotions. And people are uh, with that, just like with diabetes, uh, people with a mental illness are just as likely to experience these normal emotion. Doesn't mean they are having a mental health crisis. Yeah. So I think uh, what I gather from your talk is that uh, this is a normal reaction because this is something new, which is creating a lot of panic, fear, and anxiety. And I think people need to start learn uh, on, on coping with this kind of uh, issues in our lifetime. So the next question I have, Dr. Makija, is people are watching news and getting nervous all the time. They Some of them are 24-7 on, on watching the, the news, the social media. 
What is your advice and how can people avoid contributing to the panic during this, this sort of time and this pandemic? You know, we, we humans are, uh, are, are drawn to witnessing and watching the disaster. I mean, we all have experienced uh, driving on a highway and, and you, the traffic is jammed and we don't know why. And then we realize that we get closer, that everybody's slowing down to watch an accident on the other side of the highway. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and there is no reason, but we all have that curiosity. Oh my God, let me see what's going on. So same thing here, you know, many of us watch or read, you know, or even listen on podcasts, the tons of them uh, to keep us with what is happening. We want to know what's happening. We want to know what they are doing about it. Yeah. Uh, but deep down, I think we also want to uh, get a positive and uh, hopeful re reassuring uh, message that the coronavirus is receding. But then, unfortunately, we find out that things are getting back to worse, at yes. least at this stage. Yes. You know, and it feels like it's going to last forever and it's going to kind of consume and destroy all of us. And just because it feels that way doesn't mean that's what it is. Yeah. I mean, uh, you probably, most people remember uh, in our times, uh, the swine flu H1N1 yes. in 2003 in China, Vietnam, and uh, Taiwan, I think. And then the, there was the SARS infection. SARS, yeah. Yeah. In, and, uh, and, and, and of course, the infamous uh, Spanish flu of 1918, yeah. in which uh, I think 675,000 Americans were killed. Yeah. And compared that to only, I think, 50,000 or 55,000 of soldiers killed in the World War I. Right. So those events of tremendous magnitudes ended, passed. We survived. Yes. Many of them have forgotten that. And I think we need to remember that this too shall pass. No matter how bad it seems, there will be an end to it. Researchers are working, and we have to remind ourselves constantly that researchers yes. are working around the clock to globally to find uh, a cure to this, find and the vaccine. vaccines yes. and the vaccines. So it will be, it's a matter of time. It will come, it will slow it down. We have already seen in some countries that the virus is slowing down. Yes. So we need to remember that, not just focus on, oh my God, how bad it is getting. Yes, yes. So watching this news constantly fuels our anxiety and worries. And I think we need to discipline our consumption of media. Yes. And I, 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 in fact, this is what I practice and I would recommend to others. Uh, watch the news or listen or read the news or listen to the news maybe once or twice a day, morning and evening. <clears throat> there are no breaking news every five minutes, right. even though the network wants to believe that there is a yes. breaking yes. news every five yes. minutes. There isn't. You know, you don't need to know every time they find a new case. Yes. You know, it doesn't serve any purpose. It's just right. making us more anxious. So we need to stop contributing to our anxiety and worry. Uh, that's what I would suggest. Very, very good advice, Dr. Makija. So as uh, a mental health provider and the expert in mental health issues, what are some of the challenges people are facing right now? And what can we do to stay calm? And what can people do to feel better, less stressed, and, and live a normal life and be happy. I know it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not a time to be happy. However, the life goes on. And, and I think we need to find ways to become a little happy, spend time, spend time with the families and stay connected. Uh, I, I know there is a social distancing, but there is no uh, distancing, calling people or, or staying in touch with people uh, remotely. So what, what are your okay. thoughts and advice? Absolutely. I think one thing um, I want to say is that, you know, one of the things that they keep reporting, how many people have died. So we are getting two numbers. What is the total number okay, sis, of yes. people infected? How many people are dying? And what we are not hearing and what we are not focusing is on how many people are actually recovering. recovering yeah. Coronavirus, as you know, uh, uh, causes respiratory infection and most of them are mild and they recover. Yes. Small percentage of people succumb to it. And one in five, I think, maybe get hospitalized for care, but they recover. 
We need to constantly remind ourselves so it doesn't get out of hand in our mind. I think we are all faced with the challenge of finding a new norm in our daily routine. I think uh, uh, people are suddenly forced into new challenges. Uh, one is uh, suddenly overnight all the schools were closed, all the colleges were closed, so all the kids were home, and the parents have to work from home. So that becomes a challenge, the child care, and then setting up the school for the kids if there's homeschooling, uh, virtual schooling. Uh, uh, working from home has its own challenges constantly uh, that is brought to people. So, and, and on top of all that, the normal outlets that we have in coping with normal stress of life are all shut down. Going for yes. a walk, uh, going for movies, going to theater, uh, music classes or uh, satsangs or going to the places of worship, uh, yoga, meditation and things like that. But what I say is that, yes, those, all those are shut down, but we need to be creative and come up with new ways of finding uh, ways of entertaining and relaxing ourselves. Yes, yes. Very, very good point. So uh, based on the, the last recommendation you had, uh, so I hear people are getting bored staying home. Uh, what tips do you uh, have for those individuals overcome their boredom and how best someone can occupy their mind while staying home? Uh, any, any thoughts or recommendations for our audience? I think, you know, not too long ago, you know, we were all complaining, my God, I'm so busy. I don't have time. It was like, a, you know, complained by everybody virtually. And now yes. we have so much time and we are saying we are bored. And so I think we need to figure out, reinvent what we are doing with our time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think one of the things I would suggest is, uh, you know, People need to have a clear structure and routine in their life. They should try to go to bed at the same time yes. and wake up. Just because we are like in a, not a vacation, but vacation mode mentally, mode. we may tend to stay up late, watching this late night news uh, and opinion or whatever on uh, coronavirus and uh, or maybe watching a movie late movie, and yeah. then get up late. It's kind of messing up the whole sleep cycle. So we need to maintain a good sleep hygiene. I think we need to find creative ways of entertaining ourselves and uh, uh, playing games with your kids with and kids. with others, uh, <clears throat> board games, you know, clear up the dust from those board games that you have in right. your cellar or in your closets uh, and start playing those and you'll be surprised uh, how much entertainment is in that. Or yeah. you can you can play virtual games. I came yes. across this... Uh, very cool uh, game yesterday. Uh, in fact, I recommend it to a friend of mine who has uh, young kill, uh, children. It's called uh, uh, Just a Line. If you do, go on app and download it, it's on Android and uh, iPhone. People can hold it and play with each other and record video and it just cool things. And there are a bunch of others they can search online, <coughs> uh, virtual games, there's a quick draw. And there's autodraw.com. They can download these free games and entertain themselves. Yeah. And just because the, the yoga classes have stopped, doesn't mean you cannot do yoga, meditation, even Zumba uh, or yoga at home. What's your yes. privacy of your yes. home? You can yes. use it still. So you set up a routine so you can work all those activities in your, uh, in your routine. So I think people, <clears throat> yeah, people should uh, utilize the technology at, at the best. I think a lot of things are available virtually uh, via Skype. You can do many things. You can sing a song with friends, with, with, with small and many, many other activities you can do to reduce the stress. And I think uh, uh, have, a, have a normal routine while this is going on. So I think that that's right. very good tips, Dr. Makija. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I want to add this. You're a yeah. karaoke singer. So I yeah, karaoke. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay, yes. Know, in and, fact, uh, in fact, one of the groups from uh, from our our uh, singing group has started already virtual on, on Skype last Sunday. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. If that happens uh, <laughs> next week, I'll, I'll be probably trying myself. 
so yes good good, yeah. good tips so you can uh, become creative with uh, cooking you know finding yes, recipes yes yes know. yes yes a yes. lot of things available on youtube and many many other uh, virtual platforms where people can use so uh, one of the question i have dr makija is it's a uh, it's, it's 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 a challenging it's a uh, so a lot of workforce in the us the private sector and and even the government or public sector uh, a lot of people are teleworking working from home and what are the challenges for people when they have to work especially uh, when they're not used to of staying home or maybe staying home for one day for telework or, or two days now they have to work monday to friday uh, the entire day how they can keep their mind active and cope up with the mental health as you know uh, they are <laughs> they have routine life when they go to office they have interactions with their coworkers or colleagues and now they are home they don't have that human to human interactions and it become for some people uh, i can i can tell it becomes real challenge how can they overcome these challenges uh, on on their daily life actually you're right i think it's uh, people are complaining they are not as productive working from home and uh, and i'm i'm learning this uh, these these are normal challenges of changes in our life that have been yes. thrown at us they are not mental health problems and i'm learning this uh, from talking to people uh, one of the things uh, working from home as i mentioned earlier is you need to set up the routine yeah and the structure and that includes you get up in the morning get ready comb your hair yeah and for women make, wear your makeup and don't just sit in your pajamas get dressed and, and as if you're going to the office and so mentally somehow that will kind of get you into that mode of working and again going back to uh, going to bed on time getting up on time and in the in the office uh, people are used to taking brief breaks without even thinking they might just yeah. go to the water cooler have a drink say hello to a colleague or I'll talk about restroom. some yeah. uh, unimportant yeah. things you know and uh, yeah. and then it may be just 2 minutes or 5 minutes go to the restroom or have a coffee break and but when they're working at home they kind of get themselves in a the hole in front of their laptop or your desktop and they're just working 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 and they get consumed and they get kind of close to burning out for them yes. so too soon to burn out now but it it's getting there so i think what uh, people are creatively doing and i would recommend others to do it is take those breaks just like you do at work but and uh, so you may not have a colleague to do it you might want to just go to the other room make a call or have a coffee break with your family or if you have a young child go play with the child a little yes. bit or if you have a sick parent go care for them go for them, yes. them yes. you know so you can do find ways of taking a break you know or take a deep breath deep or breath. just go yeah. out in the yes. yard and then maybe yes. go and get a fresh air you know Absolutely. go for yes. a walk for 5 minutes you know. yes yes definitely so that will help you get into that mood mood so uh, for for general population uh, how can we all stay focused on our current task uh, whatever is scheduled in our life it is on hold right now most of most of the outside stuff and uh how can we overcome the extreme worrying we have i know worry is is a normal part of our human reaction during this time but how we all can overcome that extreme worrying in our life right i think worrying is normal but when it gets to be excessive then it kind of hampers us then we become less functional it slows us down so i think we need to overcome some of that and not let it get out of hand and one of the things that is, as i said earlier stop binging on media TV. yes if you want to binge binge on your favorite movie favorite Movies. show or or reading a book a, yeah or <laughs> read a book yeah. read a yeah. book and if you can't go to the library or go buy a book just use your kindle uh, or dust up the old books that you have in your collection that you have enough time to read uh, i would say that monitor your thoughts one of the things is you know what are you most worried about write it on paper and then do something about it yeah. and then see how realistic it is you know you might be worried unnecessarily about something that you don't have any control over control over yes yes 
and i think this is this is a global issue this is not that uh, this is your family issue or your personal health issue this is a global pandemic and i think we all need to be part of the solution and and not the problem very 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 good uh, recommendations dr uh, wakija so uh, even though uh, people uh, are relaxing uh, with things such as meditation reading and yoga and and uh, i know as a mental health provider you see some patients or even in on 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 the medicine side we see some patients uh, has some issues with their heart rate increasing uh, what else can they do to help lower the heart rate and and promote the overall calmness other than taking medications i know taking medication taking xanax or some some uh, uh, calming agent uh, it's very easy but how can someone do it without taking some some normal approach uh, to calm themselves uh, for two immediate things i would say is one stop checking your heart rate constantly <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's only yes. going to make it faster. Yes. Okay. And number uh, uh what's the stop checking your heart rate and uh find things to do to distract your mind. Hmm. Okay. And uh uh find your biggest worry. What are you worried about? Write it down as I said earlier. Yeah. Um uh, find other creative things that you can engage yourself in pick up a phone and talk to somebody somebody uh, yeah another thing that one of the thing that has been shown is that altruism or uh, kind an act of kindness and a kindness yes it 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 goes a long way in uh, practicing compassion uh, it really research has shown that uh, it results in a good feeling a true yeah. happiness actually happiness. and it yeah. is lasting happiness so find where you can practice a uh, uh, act of kindness yes yes yeah. i i i i i read the story which was really heartwarming recently about this newspaper man who who this elderly lady uh, his name is uh, greg daily from i think uh, some uh, monmouth county somewhere um uh, and she said i can't pick up the newspaper from the end of the driveway can you drop closer to my door and he <laughs> realized yeah. that this lady is afraid of walking to the end of the driveway driveway yeah so he said uh, he realized that and so he he told her hey listen i'm at the shop right do you want something from there and she said oh that would be great she said can you get something from a neighbor too so two <laughs> people requested a list of things that they want to shop right then he got an idea So yeah. with this newspaper delivery, he included his this note introducing himself, gave email, phone number. Anybody needs anything, I'll provide this free service. Yeah. And that <clears> has <throat> taken off, and he's buying grocery for these elderly people. I mean, it's a great act of Thank kindness. Yes, yes. And his whole family is involved in this. They are not bored at sitting That at home. Yes, yes. Wonderful. <laughs> so practice yes. compassion. Yes, yes. So uh, I know you talked about positivity. Stay positive. Engage in positive activities. Does that help in our uh, immune system? Uh, we feel like the social distancing is becoming so stressful, and we are starting to become paranoid. What can you advise us to stay calm? Well, we know that I'm I'm not an expert in immunology, but I know that stress. does have impact on it people do tend to get sick more when they are under stress yes. if somebody has eczema for example that tends to get worse when you are under stress people have having diabetes their blood sugar tends to go out of whack yes. when they are under stress so you need to manage the stress yes it does impact the body but if you manage your stress and overcome the stress your physical health will follow yes yes thank you So how about people already have mental health or substance use issues um, depression major depression anxiety schizophrenia they have bipolar disorder or they have some substance use disorder uh, which they have been currently managed by their mental health or medical providers do you put them any specific risk during this time of uh, pandemic or the stressful situation and what is your message for those vulnerable individuals or the population who are at additional risk of being uh, stressed well you are right i mean there is additional stress for them also like as i said earlier 
that just because they have this any of the mental illnesses doesn't mean they are not going to be affected by these other normal worries they are just as vulnerable for that yes but uh, is that pushing them over the edge are we increasing the doses of medications or increasing the frequency of uh, sessions with them that hasn't been my experience and that hasn't been the experience of my colleagues i think uh, uh, to even though uh, many of the psychiatrists and other psychotherapists are now uh, because of the social distancing have started seeing uh, patients virtually which means through one of the platforms on video conferencing yes. or just by telephone and uh, i it's an adjustment for everybody for the mental clinician plus their patients uh, but i think people are coping fairly well with that and i haven't seen that uh, worsening of the mental illnesses that people have so no i think i think they are doing well with that uh, okay yeah so that that's good to know good to know so a lot of information uh, dr mukhija you provided so before we conclude today's segment what are your final thoughts and message to our community during this stressful time what is the what what are some of the tips uh, briefly you want to tell our our viewers well one uh, first again i want to reiterate and remind people actually tell them to remind themselves that this is only temporary mm. this too shall pass no matter what no matter how bad a storm comes it always passes no matter how bad so yeah. we need to constantly remind ourselves of that because we forget that when we hear this 24/7 news media we tend to forget this so we need to constantly slow down and remind ourselves of that uh we need to find comfort in different things as as we have discussed yeah. but also not not become complacent we do need to diligently follow all the recommendations uh from cdc, CDC and the state yes. governments yes. and i think and of course don't forget to wash your hands yes practice compassion yes as i said earlier that will do you some good it will actually find you comfort it will find you happiness you'll be surprised what happens to your stress after you do that yeah uh, yeah i am uh, practicing compassion monitor yeah. your thoughts see what your biggest worries are write them down and then see how realistic that is what you're that worried is. about yes. and then do something about it yeah. you can practice your yoga meditation at home do your spiritual practices pray all that is fine but don't forget that you need to wash your hands yes yes definitely Thank you so much, Dr. Makija, for this informative segment for our viewers to stay calm and focus during the current public health crisis. Uh, we wish everyone all the best in their physical and mental health. Uh, as we know, our community in U.S. is very resilient during the, a time of natural disasters or adverse events. All the time, we we come across this not this magnitude, but uh, natural disasters on a regular basis, uh, and uh, we all need to stay focused, stay together, and help each other in the time of need, especially our vulnerable population and our seniors. Let's create positivity by disregarding fake videos or negative information we received on social media. If, it, if we can continue following the guidelines from CDC and other credible agencies and keep ourselves uh, away from other people, keep social distancing. Uh, as much as possible and create positive outcome in the end and we can all can resume normalcy in upcoming months so i think this is the like you say this is very temporary hopefully we'll we'll see end of light of the tunnel and 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 uh, soon we'll will become normal in in our daily lives thank you so much dr makija for your time Thank you. I have one final thought I wanted to share. Yes, yes, go ahead. If, uh, well, well, if you don't mind, uh, you know, one thing I have seen in these social media messages, and uh, I, I feel like uh, there is no place for bigotry in this. Yes. We are all all in this together, yes. and we need to stop uh, saying that Chinese or other Asians are responsible for this virus. I think that is causing problems, and I think if we get a message, please don't forward that message Absolutely. because we are doing this service to our, uh, you know, Asian friends. Uh, we should not do that, and it's not the reality. 
We are all in this together. Nobody's one any country is responsible for this virus. It is there. We need to cope with it. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think this, this virus is in 175 countries and almost half a million people are affected. So I think uh, we need to forget all those negative things and stay positive. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Makija. And hope we can come back uh, in a few weeks with some good news. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.